Welcome everybody. Welcome to this webinar, Business Owners Taking Action webinar. I'm John Denton and one of my businesses is called Business Owners Taking Action, which is a mentoring group of business owners that's been meeting for a number of years now. But in between times, we do things like these webinars to educate and keep people informed. And so I welcome you if you're Live, welcome. If you're watching the recording, you're very welcome as well. So, first of all, if you're not familiar with this uh, platform, there are two things I want to let you know about. One, you can use the chat section to say hello. So, Michelle's said hello. Good morning, Michelle. And um, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and so on. And there's a question tab as well. So the tab second from the left is for asking questions. And if you type your questions in there, then I'll come back to them towards the end of the webinar and be able to answer them for you. And welcome, Peter. Hi, good to be on the call. So the uh, topic for today is systems and When I put out the, the marketing for this webinar, I said it's about save yourself time, energy, money, and stress, which of course you would all have picked up is an acronym for systems. And that's what they do. So the idea of this webinar is to give you some ideas and things that you can take away and use some, talk about some tools and some how to's, more the the how-tos and how to get started. And then I'll be recommending a couple of books, which I will be quoting from along the way. So let's go into this. What I'm going to do now is, as you saw then, I'm going to give you a little exercise to do very quickly. I'm going to put up nine shapes with nine letters of the alphabet and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to remember which letter goes with which shape. So you've got 10 seconds. Any chance you can mute your microphone, Peter? Yep. The um, So you've got 10 seconds. You could do it in one or two seconds, but because it's a Friday, end of the week, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Okay, so I want you to remember which shape goes with which letter. There you go. No pressure, that's five seconds. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and gone. So now I want you to scribble on a piece of paper or jot down or think to yourself now, how many of those can I remember? And if you want to type the answer in the chat, that'd be great. As I said, you could have remembered it in probably at one second or less, but I gave you 10. Now let's have a look and see how many you got right. If you've jotted some down, if I present the same information to you, but present it this way, then I suspect you would have remembered that in less than a second because I reckon everybody on this webinar knows the first nine letters of the alphabet. And the, you can see the shape associated with the letter. So an E would be a square. F would be the open square open on the right-hand side and so on. So it would only take a second or so to remember that. But I bet you didn't remember too much when I showed it to you the first way, because this involves a system, if you like, it's something that you're familiar with, some two things that you're familiar with, the noughts and crosses grid and the first nine letters of the alphabet. So putting it together in a system or a format that's easily understood makes a big difference. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. So why systems? First question is why, why should I have systems in my business? Why 
go to all that trouble of putting in systems. Well, these days we're in decision overload. Most business owners make many, many hundreds or thousands of decisions a day. It's, uh, you know, thinking back to the good old days back then, but decisions seem to be a lot less. I told somebody the other day when I was working in Europe and doing quotes uh, as a salesman, I was doing them on a telex machine. They didn't know what a telex machine was, and you guys probably don't either. But it was a lot. Um, that was technology in those days. And it was, uh, things were much slower. Anyway, we're now faced with a whole lot of decisions every single day. And the other thing is that there's lots of demands on our attention. Our attention is constantly under attack from phones and emails and message systems and so on. You know, I refuse to sign up for any more messaging systems. I don't need any more ways that people can contact me, for goodness sake. So by the end of the day, productivity has dropped off and or stopped, as in this case, because we are just so fatigued. Business owners get so tired making decisions and having their attention grabbed. So what can we do? to help solve the problem. Systems, a good saleable business runs on systems and runs like a Swiss watch. When I was managing an IT business, I and we went through an ISO 9000 process of putting systems in and quality control. And my mantra to the staff all the time, they got sick of hearing it was, this business is gonna run like a Swiss watch. No matter what comes in, how it comes in, we will be able to deal with it quickly, smoothly, and efficiently. And the other thing is that if you're going to sell a business down the track, then you need to have good systems. It needs to be able to run without the business owner having to be there. That's the key. And the difference between a business and a practice, a business runs on <laughs> a practice runs on an expert. It's a lot more difficult to sell a practice, but even a practice needs good systems. One of the books I'll be recommending later is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he says, and I love this quote, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. So it doesn't matter how good or your goals are, or how many goals you set, you need the systems in place to make them happen. So it's a great quote. You don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the levels of your systems. So systems and processes, people use the words interchangeably, but what's the difference between a process and a system? Let's start by understanding that. So a process is where you start something, do something and end something. It's a process is the flow of work through a business. So it could be getting an order in, processing the order, getting the product or service delivered, invoicing, getting the money in the bank. That's a process. It could be a manufacturing process to manufacture something or provide a service is a process. So the process is the work flow through the business. A system, and I love this quote, this is another one, which you will hear again later. A system is a record of that process communicated in such a way that it can be executed in the way the business needs it to be done consistently every time. And the key there is executed in the way the business needs it to be done consistently every time. So think of McDonald's. McDonald's is built on systems produce consistently crappy burger, but at least it's consistent. Huh. Ray Kroc, who took the McDonald's brothers business and systems and made it into what it is today, allegedly said, if you have intelligent systems, you don't need intelligent people. So the systems run the business. So a process is what needs to be done and system is how it is done. 
I think if you keep that in mind, then it becomes a lot more understandable. So how do you start to systemize a business? Ask yourself the question, the real problem in my business is it lacks a system to do X. Think of the, the pain points, the parts of the business that get done on a regular basis. And then think about, well, what are the benefits to the business of implementing a system? Well, it'll produce a consistent product or service, give you the ability to be able to improve that quality. Um, so it all comes down to product, service delivery, customer satisfaction, and so on. What will be the benefits to me personally? So when the business is running really, really well and running on systems, then how, and you fix this particular thing up in your business and systemize it, how will that affect you personally? What will it give you back? And then ask yourself, is it worth doing? And if you can answer all those questions, then you can get started. But where do you start? So I tell people, start with the simple things that happen frequently. They're the easiest place to start systemizing. And that will start to get you some time back then to work on some of the other things, like the more complex things that happen frequently. Do you like the way I managed to get the T to come on the bottom of those little squares? <laughs> and then get on to the simple and infrequent um, items in the business. So they're pretty simple things. So it's simple to systemize them, and but they don't happen very often. And then finally, by the time you've done all that, you would have freed up enough time to be able to now address the more complex and infrequent systems. So if you start and work your way through in that order, then you'll start to get things done. And again, once you start systemizing and the more systems you put in place, the more time you will free up to do more of it and get your time back to work on the business. So what I want to do now, I can see that Peter Butler is, is here. <coughs> so I'm going to ask Peter, Peter is a member of the Business Owners Taking Action, the BOTA group, and he lives and breathes processes and systems. So let me bring Peter back on. So Peter, Hi. Am, am I right that you live and breathe processes and systems? I do. And then you can add the sexy word automations as well. So... <laughs> Absolutely live for that stuff. Oh, automations. All right. So you can share your screen on, and, yeah, tell us a little bit about how to get started. I mean, before we talk about tools and things like that, yep. where should we start? Okay. You can see my screen all right? Picture of me? Website? Yes. Yep, great. So, I mean, that... I mean, I made a note of that. How do you start to systemize? And, and quite often people ask me that question because I've got a reputation for this. And you don't start with the software because that's what people you know, want to start with. Okay, tell me what software you use. And, and it's not about the software. The software can help you take it to a higher level, yes. But if you don't have it documented, then you're actually in trouble. So... I'll share now where we start as soon as I can find it right here and it's called notepad that's it all you do is make notes and as you said John you know you start with those tasks that are repetitive that are simple that are uh, easy to document uh, and you start there a and the next time you do it just document the steps without maybe any detail, the overview. And the next time you do it, add more detail. And then each time you do it, take it to a higher level. And all of a sudden, you've got something documented. Now, that's very rudimentary, but that's literally where we start. Now, this is for our new CRM launch. So we're starting off with that, but this is where we start. 
Now, I'll share with you the journey that I've been on. I'll just take that out of the window. Now, we use really high-level software. I'm going to show you where we ended up, and then I'm going to share with you the journey. Does that make sense, John? Yeah, yeah. Yep, to That's getting correct. there. So I've shown you the start. We just capture a notepad. We use Notepad++, uh, which is a, a really cool little bit of free software. If you use Microsoft Notepad, by the way, and you happen to have an internet outage or you forget to save it or whatever, you lose everything. Notepad++, you will not lose everything. It saves it by default. Very, very cool little free software. So we document it in there. And then the end result is we end up in, this is called Process Street, giving away the answer early. However, I want to share that journey. So this here is my complete web build process. Now, of all the industries on the planet, and I mean the planet, the two hardest to systemize are website design and the custom home building uh, area. And the reason for that is they have the most variables of all the industries. So they're the hardest to systemize because of those variables. Now, in my process, there are 384 steps, and I'll share those with you shortly. But what I'm going to show you first off... You're going to go through all 384? Yeah, in detail, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> set, settle in. <laughs> it's going to be a long day. Uh, no, not at all. So I'll show you where we started. I'll just bring this across. And it's a very cool little tool called Excel. So what we did was we had it in a notepad. We just had rough notes. And then we took it across to this spreadsheet. Just open that up. So these are all the different build areas when we're running through a website. So this is what we started with. And so these are all the little things and people could check it off using the little um, default table marking tools, whatever they're called. And so these are all the different sections that we go through when we're building a website. And that's wonderful. And I think we ended up with 82 steps. So from there, and that, that was all very well and good. But the problem was that when you started a project and then you made an improvement in the system, yes, you can insert it here, but it's not going to be retrospective to the projects that are currently underway. There are ways to do that, but it's very clunky. So that was sort of stage two, I suppose. And I'll just drag that out of the way and I'll drag the next one across. And so this was the next level where we really defined the different stages. We ended up breaking it down into 10 stages from the, uh, literally it was the uh, project setup and then the briefing and the design and so forth. So we gave it an even higher level of definition throughout the process. And in here we had links because there's more information than needed. Uh, then, then you can document in a spreadsheet. So these are links to, to other things in our uh, uh, server, you know, links to certain documentation. And that was great. But again, we always had the problem where as you improve your systems, and, and I can pretty well guarantee your systems will never be finished. You'll, you'll get it to a stage where it's it can run itself. But certainly for our in industry, there's always improvements and updates. So we were still faced with this problem where when we wanted to update the process, it wasn't made retrospective. So then we thought, okay, and the other problem was these are living somewhere else. We'd like to have them embedded so we can see them without having to click through to other links. So then we thought, okay, well, let's take it from a spreadsheet system. And we went to high-level software called... Microsoft Word, and the reason for that was we wanted to, and this is our build process, this is going back seven or eight years now, and there was, we were able to, you know, copy and paste information into emails, I can't actually find any, but there is some messaging somewhere, as you can see, this is a very long document, so I won't keep scrolling. But it meant that I could copy and paste messages into emails very simply, and we had checkboxes and so forth. And so that was great. 
But again, we were still faced with the problem of, of uh, you know, any changes and improvements we made, they wouldn't apply retrospectively to projects currently underway. So we dispensed with that, and that was where we then uh, got Process Street, which is software. It's cost effective, but we would not have been able to do that without this. Without this documentation, the detail that we had in there made the transition for us into this very smooth. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's. Um, I think we should reinforce at this point that not everybody is going to have uh, such a, a detailed, uh, such a requirement for so much detail or so much. Um, no, a absolutely you know, correct. And and you know, yeah, no, a absolutely good point, John. And I'll just share another. So this is my website build process. So I'll share another process with you shortly. So you can see you can assign people to the process. So I'm involved with all of this down to I think section 29. No, there you go, 31. And then I hand over to uh, my tech, who then hands over to uh, my other tech, who does all the accounts and setups and so forth, who then hands over to my project manager. Uh, and then she hands over to my designer, and then she hands it back to my tech. Uh, and so it goes on. And I'll just zoom down the uh, bottom so you can see what I was saying was the truth. And it, all 10 stages of the build are in here. So you can see the different staff assigned to the different tasks. And we have, I lied, there's 375 sections. I think I said 384, so there you go. Now, all of those uh, processes, they include getting a review uh, because that's where a lot of business owners struggle. You do this great work. When's the best time to get a review? Right at the handover. And so we've got a process built within the process for maximising our reviews. So there's a lot of detail in here. But, John, you made the point that uh, not everybody has that amount of detail and absolutely valid point. So I'll just share my menu. Um, oh, actually, here's a little point. So these are all the web projects we've got under the way, and you can see the different stages and the status of that. So it's nice having that quick, ready retina. And uh, for me as a business owner, knowing the status of our projects. Now, if I go to my literally table of contents. So these, this is the library of processes that we now have developed. Because once you start on this journey, it actually becomes simpler because you become conditioned to, to think this way. And even if you're not wired this way, once you start, you can, you'll train yourself and or your team to do this. Uh, we have Process Street Fridays where my project manager updates certain proce or processes that we notice need updating through the week. But in here, if you talk about, say, HR, right, and client, uh, sorry, new team member onboarding. So we have a process for that. So I have one for a sales team, which I uh, developed a while back for uh, onboarding new team members. Now, we used this uh, about a year ago. We had a changeover with a graphic designer. Uh, this has been in play for a number of years. And the requirement is, as a person runs through that, if any one of us has a conversation with them and that conversation is not documented in here, their requirement is to use a, there's a little comment section built in uh, that they make a comment about that to draw our attention to the fact that we need to update the system, the process. Does that make sense? So you've got a continuous and never-ending improvement process yeah. behind the processes. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's gold. It just absolutely is. Um, and, and also with team members, I mean, it depends on the business, of course, but... I think I've got this open. No, I don't. Uh, so, oh, and I, look, I've got a leave application process in there. So if any one of my team wants to uh, have a day off, then they follow that process, which sends a, it sends a, an email notification through to uh, my project manager. I get CC'd in. She manages all of that for me. Um, but at least I'm aware of it. I don't have to do anything. And uh, then she tracks it in our tracking software and yada, yada, whatever. So, which is pretty cool. But one of the things that I sort of learned earlier on, especially in our industry, with every team member we onboard, because they're all doing different roles, their, uh, 
their priority understanding is different. So a tech might need to know more about a particular facet than, uh, say, my graphic designer. And so my project manager is able to go through all himself um, and just mark off their uh, priority understanding level required. It might just be an awareness that we do that in the company uh, or they need to be really competent in that. By us ticking that draws their attention to how much you know, focus and, and effort they've got to put into here. Plus, we've got little checks, boom. Uh, so when that gets ticked, you know, if, if they don't get that right, but they've ticked it off, well, you know, we've got every right to have a conversation because, hey, we've, we've had a conversation with you, we've informed you, you have ticked, you understood, but clearly you didn't. So you need to go back and go back to ground zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good to me. Mm. So it's a step-by-step, -step, you know, onboarding system. And the thing is that, you know, I know local business owners who are going through this right now where they've, they've onboarded somebody and onboarding people is just so much time and effort. It's massive. Um, and it becomes repetitive if those people don't work out, if you don't get it right. And why would you not? I mean, you can even record this, like literally verbally, you know, using tools like Otter. You can record that conversation, ha uh, transcribes it automatically, and hey, bang, there's a step. You might want to tweak that conversation, but the the raw information's there to start your process. Yeah, and it's all about consistency. And, and again, it means you don't have to think about it every time because it's all mm -hmm. documented. You just follow the dots. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the point you're making as well, Peter, is that it all starts originally. It's not about the tool. It's about understanding your business and what's happening in your business and mapping that mm. out. Yep. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and it, it's funny because, you know, I'll, I'll refer back to this, uh, this Notepad++ document. So my tech, uh, I, I made some key notes and, and popped them in here and then there were steps before um, what I was, what I just documented uh, that he did. So he threw that in here and we literally just sort of, you know, tabled it out, bang, 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 typed it out and, uh, and copied and pasted it in here. So is this a smooth working flow? No, it's not. But the next time the both of us uh, tackle this onboarding, uh, we're going to add detail. We'll actually take it to uh, Process Street because Process Street does a whole heap more than just what it appears in that menu. Um, there, there's incredibly uh, sexy stuff. I don't know how much more time we've got, um, but I could share some of that if we have time. But I the point is that <laughs> when you run yeah. through this and put we'll it in... We'll keep that level of detail for another webinar, I think. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. Yep. So, but the point being that, you know, when you do document it, each time you run for, through, you're taking it to a whole other level. Um, one of the things I will just quickly share, um, just so that people understand how much time they're going to save. Um, I'll just go back to that core document. Uh, at the very top of this process, uh, we compile information into here. So the client's first name, surname, all of the relative information we need. The beauty of using software like this, once this is entered here, let's say it's step 30, I need that information there. This software can pass that information through to step 30 and step 55 and step 360 so that you're not having to scroll up and down looking for that information. You and that's why you see that I'm only involved in the first few stages, 30, whatever it was, um, because all of my input is there and the, the detail of the project, the pricing for the accounts, for everything is passed through to the relative sections in the whole process, which is incredibly powerful. Yeah, fantastic application, really is. Mm. It is. The other thing, just quickly, uh, initial welcome message. So I've already got a welcome message created. So all that happens there is that, um, you know, the client's email gets put in there, the client's project email, my team is CC'd in so they know the project's been um, set off, kicked off. 
if they've got other vested parties, the information's passed through, their first name, everything. So all I have to do is click send and the email opens up. All of that information is already inputted and I just click send. And we've got those embedded uh, pre-written emails, which you can edit on the fly to personalise to that particular client and or project. So it's all still personal, but it means there are no cracks. Nothing gets missed. Yeah, it's great. It's, um, again, it's saving time. It's saving you time. It's getting the consistency of delivery of, of product service and how you're dealing with staff. I mean, um, I'm sold, okay? Yep, cool. Sign you up now. <laughs> okay. So, Peter, how can people get in touch with you if they want any more information? Uh, so, smarterwebsites.com.au uh, or Peter, but uh, no, Peter at smarterwebsites.com.au. Or you can give the office a call. So, just Google Smarter Websites, we're there. Terrific. So, if you could stop sharing now, please, that would be great. That would be great if I could find that. <laughs> It's all right. I'll keep going while you do that. So there you go. Peter really does live and breathe processes and systems. And with a web development business, you couldn't live without it. So now another common question that I get asked is, how do I ensure that systems are followed? It's all very well to create those systems and processes. <clears throat> But how do I ensure that people follow them? So, and so that you can remember this, I'm going to use some names that may be common knowledge to you. Boeing certainly is. And David Lee Roth is to some of the more mature age people. Um, so what do they, what do Boeing and David Lee Roth have in common? So let's have a look. Boeing. Back in 1935, Boeing were involved in a fly-off with Douglas and Martin to sell the U.S. Army Air Corps a new bomber. And everybody was putting their money on Boeing because they'd produced a bigger, faster uh, plane than anybody else. And it was so big for the time and it was one of the first to have four engines uh, on the wings that it got nicknamed by a Seattle newspaper person. It got nicknamed the Flying Fortress, which was a name that stuck later on. And everybody thought it was just a, a shoe in They were going to win it. But this fly-off took part in Dayton, Ohio in 1935. The Boeing, it was called a Model 299, uh, took off, climbed to 300 feet, stalled, tipped on its wing and crashed. Oh. And two of the five crew died. But interestingly, after that, the what Boeing did, or what they didn't do, they didn't insist that pilots needed more training or anything like that. Some people were saying it's too much plane for one person to fly. What they found out was, in their investigation, it was actually pilot error that caused the crash. And as a result of that investigation, they introduced a thing called a flight checklist. In this case, a pre-flight checklist. So it wasn't a question of more training. It wasn't a technical problem. It was just simply getting everything lined up and done correctly so and checklists like this are still used today and that came about in 1935 so it's pretty amazing really and recently in Australia we uh, I think it was last week a report was published about a, an F-16 that crashed at 2020 I think um, on takeoff and it was discovered to be pilot error due to the pilot not following the checklist so there you go mm. that's the value of 
having good checklists. All right, David Lee Roth. Type into the cat area if you know who David Lee Roth is. I know, come on, there's a couple of people here I know are old enough. Musician, yeah, could be called a musician. Anybody else? Heavy metal, mm, an old rocker, yes, certainly an old rocker. Dave Lee Roth is the guy here in red. And I love this quote, courtesy of the Guardian, this photo and, and the quote, Dave Lee Roth said, I've been rich, I've been poor, rich is better. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. Yeah, it's a good quote. And of course, that is Van Halen. That's the band Van Halen and David Lee Roth was the lead singer. And back in the 70s when they were touring, they were the band that had the most equipment, the biggest stage show going at the time. And they were very, very popular, but Dave Lee Roth was thought to be a bit of a crackpot because in the contract to, for the venues, he had a clause written into the contract, into the staging contract, and it was right in the middle of the the contract, there was a clause there to say, uh, put a bowl of M&Ms in Dave Lee Roth's changing room, dressing room, but remove the brown M&Ms. So there's to be no brown M&Ms. And people thought this guy's just a drugged up crackpot musician. But of course he wasn't. What he was doing was he was putting in a test in the contract to make sure that the staging people followed everything to the letter. And it, he, he's written this up in his biography, autobiography, called um, Feeling the Heat. And he explains that on one occasion in Colorado, I think it was, they turned up and there were brown M&Ms in the bowl. So as a result of that, they went through and checked all the staging uh, set up and discovered that the people who had set it up had not taken into account the floor loading of all the equipment and it could easily have collapsed. It could have killed them. It could have killed other people. Um, so what he was doing was putting a check into the contract to make sure that the steps were followed. So he was actually... A pretty smart guy uh, and not a crackpot. So the things that Boeing and Dave Lee Roth have in common is checklists and systems. Wouldn't you love it, Peter? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> so if you want people to follow systems, you can put checks and balances in to make sure that systems are being followed. That's my point. Um, and a lot of businesses do that. So how do you record and document systems? There's in the chat area there, there's an invite to business owners taking action in July, um, where we will have a lady called Liz Hurst, uh, who's gonna to present to the group about, for business owners, how to produce business operations manuals, um, which ties in with all of this. And if you're attending this live, you can click on that or go to the box in the second from the right icon in the top right hand corner and you can click and register as a guest if you haven't been to one of our voter group meetings before so simplest form of a system is a checklist use checklist to ensure that systems are being followed process street peter's demoed that and talked about that trello is another simple way to start with uh, documenting processes there's flow charts Lucid Chart is a good one. There's uh, Mind Maps. All these different tools can be used to create um, systems and processes and document them. I love using Mind Maps as a way of getting all the information out for a process before you start documenting it as well. And what's the benefit? Why have systems? So this is going back. A little bit to the beginning but you know prevent or minimize errors 
save yourself time, energy, money, and stress. Reduce the need for re, re reduce training new staff. Peter was talking about onboarding new staff. They will need to be trained on on things. If you've got systems and processes well documented, makes the training easy. You can bring temporary staff in when staff are on holiday. Frees up time for the owner to work on the business. The owner doesn't need to be there. Things get done consistently and in a timely manner. The business isn't owner centric and becomes saleable and reproducible. So you can sell it many times over. Turn it into a franchise. Franchises run on systems. So something I said earlier, and I, I just love this statement. A system is a record of a process communicated in such a way that it can be executed in the way the business needs, needs it to be done consistently every time. So there you go. Well worth remembering. And the books that I've been quoting from, Atomic Habits, that's a, a must read. Lots of systems in there for changing habits, which then leads to making changes in your business and it's just a brilliant brilliant book and i know a few people on uh, on this webinar are devotees of that book as well and mm -hmm. the checklist manifesto so the boeing story and the dave lee roth story and many more are in that book um it can be a bit of a heavy read but it's well worth working through it to reinforce the need for checklists. So I know, Peter, you're an atomic habit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just one small change at a time. It's, you know, while we have Process Street Friday updates and things like that uh, came as a result of, you know, remembering and reading this. Absolutely. And uh, there's a great intro in there about how the British cycling team went from being the worst in the world to being the best in the world um, by making those small atomic changes in how they did things. Anyway, great read. So what can you do now? Well, you can work with me. I, I do business assessments, business saleability checkups. You know, know where you stand now, get some idea of what your business is worth and how it's valued. So that's a one-on-one -on -one private thing that I do with business owners. You can join the business owners taking action group and be part of a group where the business owners help each other work, share ideas, test things out, try things. And there are no competing businesses in the group. Or you can get some one on one coaching from me if you want to fast track things and get things moving faster. But you can find out all of this at johndenton.com.au and there's a few more ways that you can contact me i'll now bring peter back on so that we can wrap up it's great and great session john if uh, i've just started using linktree as a, just a little bit of an aside here so okay. now i I could just put the link tree uh, URL up and not the others because if you go to that URL, it takes you to all the others anyway. All uh, right. Okay. Yeah, and you, you mentioned a uh, a few tools uh, in some of those wrap up slides, you know, like Trello and uh, Wireframe mind mapping software. I mean, I've got so many of those that I use. Could um, do, do a share one day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the subject for another webinar. We can look at some of those yeah. tools, yeah. do a bit of training on them. Yeah, so yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, I manage my whole team, which is seven, you know, globally, um, using Trello and other project management tools. So, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for your contribution, Peter. My pleasure. As always, um, fantastic input. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, I'll give you another minute or so if you want to register for the July Boda meeting now. You can do that. I think if you click on the 
yeah, you can click on the link in the chat area there where it says launched offer. And that will take you through to a registration link. Cool. So thank you, everybody. If you're watching the recording, you can contact me through the contact form on johndenton.com.au or any of those areas there. All right. So thanks, everybody. And bye for now. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks, Peter.